Um, for the last two years of my life, I've been looking for this really big solution to what is a very big problem, which is getting more women and girls into technology. I've lobbied government for policy change. I've raised money from big companies. And I've even written a book on the subject. But the fact is that the number of women in technology is declining. And, and I feel a bit like I've failed. And, and that isn't easy to say out loud, especially in front of this audience. Um, despite an increase in awareness of the lack of women in technology, I mean, even The Good Wife, one of my favorite American shows, was talking about the lack of women in technology. In the US, in the last 20 years, the number of women in technology has gone down by 20%. In the UK, it's gone down to 16%. So what is it that we're doing that just isn't working? Well, what I learned is that we don't need one big solution to revolutionize the tech industry. What we actually need is lots of grassroots changes, lots of small things, because actually, big transformations are built on small changes. And the answer is in the details. And as women, we notice details in our environments, our language, our tone. And the problem with the technology industry, through these details, these subtle cues, they are telling us that we as women, we do not belong that actually we're not welcome here. What do I mean by these details? I mean small things, the layout of our classrooms. I mean the screen savers we have on our computers, um, the posters in our cafeterias, really small stuff. It's really banal, it's really cheap to change. But, and two years ago, I would have dismissed all that stuff as trivial. Yet it works. It works because it signifies to women whether they belong in a space. But why is it? Why is it that women feel that they don't belong? The people, Maxine touched on the perception of people who work in tech. The place, the environments that young women think they're going to work in. And perfection the desire that young women have to be perfect, the perception of people who work in technology. We asked hundreds of teenage girls from around the world to draw pictures of what a technologist looks like. <laughs> it ain't that flattering, is it? 99% of our teenagers drew men. All had glasses, well, apart from this guy who has actually got hairy ears and looks like a hobbit. <laughs> the perception of people who work in tech is pizza-guzzling nerds who cannot get girlfriends. <laughs> and you know what, when I asked the girls, I asked some of my teenage girls, I said, you know, how would you feel if you had to work with the person that you'd drawn? They didn't hold back. This is what Lila told me, I'd rather be a garbage collector than work in technology. I know, and the serious point, this is really, really serious, because actually girls are saying, this is not my world. Place, the environment. I asked the girls to do a similar exercise. I asked them to draw, what do you think an office, a technology office looks like? They all do something very similar to this. It is cubicles. It is boring. Nobody is speaking to each other. Now, this is so far from the truth. And Maxine could tell us what the Facebook offices are like. But this is what the Google offices are like. There is a flotation tank relaxation room. <laughs> now, I wish I had that in my office. So the fiction is so far removed from the reality. The third issue why young women feel that they don't belong in the tech industry is perfection. 
So I run lots of mixed um, tech groups with mixed groups. And the one different, I also have a son and a daughter. The one thing I notice is that girls, girls desire to be perfect. Girls hate to fail. And they hate to fail publicly. Now, if you think about when we create software, it's an iterative pro process, OK? You get it right, you get it wrong, you get it right. And actually, in software development, every failure is one step closer to the truth, to getting it right. The truth? <laughs> to getting it right. So this culmination of these three things gives us this, that girls feel that they don't belong. So what small interventions, going back to my point about details, what small interventions can we as a community do to demonstrate to girls that they do belong? Okay, a study at Washington University um, wanted to gauge young women's interest and men in computer science. They took two interview rooms. Um, on the left, they put very geeky things, so Star Trek poster, cans of um, soda, and old pizza boxes. They also had an alternative interview room where they put a picture of nature and took out the um, pizza boxes and replaced those with bottles of water. The women who were interviewed in the more neutral room were more likely to take up computer science. Now, what's interesting here is not, it wasn't just women. It, men actually also preferred this room. So as women, what we do can often benefit men. So posters, OK, so that was ambient identity cues, posters. Even a poster can empower other women. Another Swiss study took 150 people, and what they did was they asked women to deliver a speech. They found if you put posters up of powerful women, in this case, political figures, but if you put posters up of powerful women, the women delivered a better speech. Screensavers. I'm working with a North London school, and what we've done is we've changed the screensavers, OK? Because nothing. But what this does is it gives girls, before they're doing a robotics or a coding lesson, it gives girls permission to succeed. The layout of our classrooms. So David Talbot, brilliant computer science teacher in North London, what he's done is he's rearranged the desks in his computer science lab. Now, he's gone from, this is typical in the UK, don't know how it is here, but everyone has their back to each other, the same. Um, nobody speaks. And what he's done here is he's actually got all the girls into clusters. And in, what I love about this is it really encourages peer-to-peer -peer learning. And that is really, really important for young women because what that does is it takes the fear out of failure. And as one girl said to me, no teacher can ever understand me in the way that my friend can. Language. Every word we use is so important. A FTSE 100 company, they changed the job ad, the title of the job ad, from technology manager to digital manager. They saw the increase in the number of women apply by 30%. One little word was all it took to bring a whole new group of women into technology. So if we want to inspire our young women to be tech pioneers, we need to focus on these small things. Because these small things determine who belongs in a space. And the examples I've shared with you are not just relevant to the tech sector. I'm working with one of the biggest banks in Europe and implementing some of these things. I'd like, us to, I'd like your help doing three things. Number one is obsessing over these small things that send these subtle cues. You know, posters, screensavers, whatever it is. Um, no, nothing is too small. Secondly, we, are, we have this amazing community, Spiring 50. I would love us to create a global library of best practice. What is going on in your own countries and how can we learn from you? And finally, let's create environments where failure is encouraged. It was interesting, I was doing the prep for this and I showed 
my um, notes to a male colleague. He said, don't talk about failure. And it's okay to talk about failure. And I do think, as women, we really need to remind ourselves that actually every time we fail, it is one step closer to getting it right. So let us collectively create a future where the internet is not just built by men. A future where women feel that they belong and a future where access is no longer denied. Thank you.